This next speaker is a champion for developers big and small, and he's got a PhD in being an inspiration. With a long history of product and marketing excellence, before joining Roblox, he built international games and led teams that made things like Wars with Friends 2 and the Kings of Camelot. But for the last couple of years, he's taken on his highest honor yet, representing all of you. And recently, he's become the newest dad on DevRel. Ah, be ready to fall under his spell. Let's welcome to the stage the VP of Developer Relations, Mr. Matt Curtis. Thank you, Jay Party. How's everyone doing? This is amazing. For everyone in person, for everyone virtual, Welcome to RDC. I'm so excited to talk to you all. My name's Matt. As Jay Party said, I am a new dad, but I also run developer relations. I go by Marhu on the platform, and there's so much that I want to talk to you about today. So we're going to start with the vision of developer relations. And then we're going to go into some community updates, hit on some milestones, and then I'm going to go into the meat of it, and we're going to talk about some exciting features and programs. So let's get started. It all starts with this team. You know them very, very well, our developer relations team. We recently took a class screenshot, as you can see. And really, I'm just honored to call them my coworkers. They all come from the community. They understand it intimately. And our vision is to ensure that we provide the appropriate support for all of you. And it doesn't matter where you are on your developer journey. You could be new. You could just be learning how to code, model, et cetera. Or you could be a veteran on the platform 10 years in with a studio. Maybe you're not even on Roblox yet. Maybe you just started. You have done something previous in the past. Regardless of where you are, we want to provide you with the appropriate support. Because at the end of the day, it's all about you. It's all about our amazing community. You are the user in UGC. And us supporting you allows you to thrive. So before we jump in, I want to give a special shout out to some special folks within the community. First, our community event organizers. Thank you so much for making UGC events such a spectacular, special thing this year. I'm going to get into this a little bit later in the deck. And of course, our heroes and members of our developer council. You go above and beyond to make your fellow developers supported, and you also help us support them as well. So could we please give a round of applause to our heroes, our developer council, and our community organizers. So with that, I'm going to get into some community highlights. So we're going to talk about some new milestones. We're going to talk about some existing experiences. We'll also talk about some new kids on the block. And then I'm also going to highlight some of the innovations in tech. So can you believe that Brookhaven was launched last year? They've already hit 11 billion visits. This puts them in the top five most visited games on Roblox, number four, actually. And in just a year and a half, this is a fantastic milestone. I can't wait to see what else they create. But then, of course, there's Adopt Me. So last year, Adopt Me hit 1.6 million concurrence, which was a new record. They then surpassed it with 1.8. And this year, they topped it again with 1.9 million concurrent users. On top of that, they exceeded 25 billion visits. That puts them as the most visited experience in Roblox history. And not only are they a big experience on Roblox, this makes them one of the biggest experiences in the world, regardless of platform. Huge milestone, and I know they'll continue to keep on making fantastic content. 2021 had some amazing releases. And there's a few, these six in particular, that share something in common. They all exceeded 100,000 concurrent users. That's no small feat for any experience. But to do that in less than a year is next level. So huge congratulations to Wacky Wizards, Bed Wars, Pet Simulator X, Funky Friday, Livetopia, and Anime Fighters. And then I just wanted to highlight some of the really cool uses of new technology. As you saw in Dave and Dan's keynotes, there's a bunch of new stuff on the horizon. And we're starting to see experiences innovate and include this in their, in their amazing content. I can't wait to see what all of you create once we have 
more performance, more technology, and more tooling. So what does this all lead to? Well, engagement. So as Dave showed, we've jumped like a rocket ship over the past few years and actually peaked at 9.7 billion hours engaged last quarter. That's a huge number, and it's a testament to the amazing content that all of you create. But out of this, there's some other really cool metrics that start to pop out. For instance, engagement-based payouts has increased by 5x over the past year, from June 2020 to June 2021. And this is an area where we want to continue to invest, because we feel if you can create high-quality content, it's just going to continue the flywheel. And of course, that leads into $500 million in developer earnings for this year, half a billion dollars. That's a 50% increase year over year. That's huge. That's all because of all of you and the amazing content that you make. But beyond engagement and monetization opportunities, you know that Roblox provides a lot of other value. So what I wanted to do is quickly just categorize the value for all of you for everything you need, rapid iteration, and instant global access. What I'm going to do is leverage these to go through some of the key points that I wanted to touch on. So let's start with everything you need. So you know that Roblox Studio is a powerful and intuitive development environment. Add in storage, hosting, payment processing, plus moderation and customer service, and it quickly becomes a flagship platform that you can create on for no upfront cost. We're also working on really innovative ways to find talent through the Talent Hub, and we're working on robust resources for every developer. So let's jump into the Talent Hub. This is an exciting new feature. We launched the beta in August. We currently have 50,000 creators. As a job poster, you can post your job. You can leverage certain attributes to search for job seekers. And you can interview and vet them. As a job seeker, you can find the right job for you. You can actually apply and then get it on Talent Hub. We're actively rolling this out to all 13 plus accounts. And in the coming weeks, we should be at 100%. But this is something that is vision aligned with what we want to change. We want to ensure that you can connect professionally and work all on Roblox. As you've probably seen, the community space was well received with Spatial Voice. We also released a bunch of dev modules, and we're going to continue to invest here. We're adding more dev modules for you to use in your experiences as you see fit. And that's the case with endorsed content as well. You've probably seen the forest that we launched earlier this year. Dave showed off the space station, which looks amazing. And all this content will have endorsed models, asset packs, and full source code. And we're actually working on robust documentation so you can pick and choose what you want to use for your experience. We're going to continue to roll out more of these showcases so you can use them how you see fit. The Game Fund is something that's super exciting that we launched this year. We announced a $25 million fund to create next-gen game content. Each project starts at $500,000 and goes up from there. And we've received hundreds of applications. Um, and I just want to say we review every one, and we provide feedback. And today, I want to announce the first three that we greenlit. So Neon Knights is a cyberpunk, isometric role-playing game. Rolling Thunder is a realistic military first-person shooter. And Winds of Fortune is an open-world seafaring adventure. I want to note that applications are still open. So if you haven't applied, please do. And even if you did apply, you can resubmit. So I look forward to reviewing your applications and seeing you in the next round of Greenlight. So when we talk about rapid iteration, what we really mean here is that you can go to all platforms with one-click publish. And our scalable infrastructure does all the heavy lifting in the background. When you add in stuff like studio analytics, best practices from the community, and then dynamic support from developer relations, you really can iterate to success. And the creator dashboard is one way we're doing this. So we've been focused on key product indicators showing stuff like daily active users, day seven retention. But for certain metrics, like day one and day seven retention, we also have benchmarks. So you can understand where your experience is relative to your peer set 
and identify the main areas that you want to focus on. We're also working on extending this to all developers by 2022. And what's even better is we're working on additional metrics, health metrics and performance metrics, and that's based on your feedback. So more to come in the next year. As you know, the Dev Forum is the best place to not only get support and feedback, but to provide it to others. And we've seen a huge influx of new developers, which has been amazing. But we've also noted that we need to focus on some quality of life improvements. So I'm sure many of you will be happy to hear we're focused on improving navigation and filtering so you can actually get the relevant content for you. We also greatly appreciate your feedback. So we've fully revamped our bug submission process. And this is not just on the front end. We've actually revamped the full back end of it as well. We triage every bug that's submitted. We make sure the right stakeholder within Roblox is assigned. And we actually communicate to the developer who submitted it. What we're doing is extending this best practice to features as well. We really want to hear your, your feedback on features. But there's some nuances we're working through. So we're hopeful that we'll have something to announce early next year, but more to come on that. And then Level Up has been a unique collaboration with our DevRel Insights team, our DevRel Game Insights team, and top developers, where we've taken their best practices, talked about everything from content cadence to quest design and live operations, and then broadly shared them with all of you. We've received a lot of positive feedback on these, so expect more special guests and more content. So the Accelerator has helped countless developers create and collaborate. But one of the downsides with the pandemic is that we lost out on the intangible value of it being in person. So starting in mid-2022, we're actually going to start hybrid classes. There's going to be a subset of developers that will be on site, but we're going to reserve a certain section for remote international teams. We've seen a huge benefit from allowing this in the remote style, and we want to continue that trend. I also want to remind everyone that applications for the spring 2022 class are still open. So if you haven't checked it out, please go to the Dev Forum and do. So when we talk about instant global access, we're talking about one-click publish, not just to platforms, but to everywhere in the world, everywhere that Roblox supports. And then you can use specialized tools like machine translation to ensure that your experience works wherever you publish it. Personalized search and discovery ensures users actually get relevant content and they become high quality for you. And then they can bring their friends, which with all the server infrastructure we have is frictionless, which allows for this network effect and amplifies your user acquisition. We're also working on unique opportunities with global brands and musical artists. Speaking of which, we know now that global brands and musical artists view Roblox as the future of social interaction. And we've been really impressed with what we've seen, but it's only the beginning. We want to open this to all of you. What if you could work with your favorite brand or your favorite musical artist? We're actually working on a process to facilitate that. More to come on this in the beginning of next year, but if you want to learn more now, please check out the Brand and Music booth at the conference this year. So Search is a, has actually gotten lots of improvements over the past couple of years. We've added in the telemetry to capture the right signals to make it more powerful than ever. So I can search for a query, like simulator, and I get relevant results based on that category. But if I want to make something a little bit more exact, like driving simulator, the appropriate signals will actually give me driving sim simulator because it's relevant. But this isn't just for exact search. It also works for terms that still provide the right signals for that experience. So if I also search for drive sim, I get driving simulator. This is really important for our users because they get relative content. It's also important for all of you because the more relevancy for the users, the higher quality users you will receive. And this actually has expanded to discovery as well. So all of these are real. They're all from DevRel members. Each user 
has a different sort, a different sort order, and even different content within the sort based on their relevance and their, their, the personalization of their home page. So again, this is important for them because they're getting the, the best content for themselves, but when they join these experiences, they're going to be more relevant for you. But if you further want to expand your distribution, there's always sponsored experiences. And we continue to improve this. We've added targeting. We've added scheduling. And I want to say that it's so affordable relative to other ad networks. In fact, the average cost per click for a sponsored experience is between two to three Robux. That's two to three cents. When you compare that to the leading ad networks, CPCs are generally in the two to three dollar range. So this is 100x less than what you'd pay elsewhere, and it allows you to scale your games and your experiences and ensures that you have a healthy user base for anything you want to do. So as I said earlier, our event organizers have been amazing this year. We have over 100, and they've greatly helped with UGC events. This is something that we launched a little over a year ago. And since then, we've had 120 events, over 20,000 RSVPs. Our developer engagement team has also engaged and created geo-specific events for the communities they support. And I've just been so impressed with what you've all created. This is truly events for creators by creators. And we want to continue to invest in this. We want to bring it back into Roblox. And we also want to host in-person events once we're able. So a lot more to come on this in the near future. So with that, I just wanted to say thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. And please leverage RDC as an opportunity to learn, connect, and just have fun. Thank you very much.